Maxine Bishop, Susie Thompson, we got an unspoken request. Brother Jerry Lee Klein needs our prayers. I believe this says Mary on the list. Bud, unspoken for Taylor, Adam, Nathan, and Frankie Bradford. Frank Bradford and our country on the list tonight. Anybody else have any requests? They want to remember Sister Diana, she's battling cancer also. She's been feeling rough, so her system's down. She can catch anything coming and going. So remember her as we pray. Anybody else? Okay, Dachi Southern. Karen? Sister Karen's mom. I think she's going through rehab now, probably, right? After her walk. Two falls, right? So remember her as we pray. All right, well, if you would, let's just gather around the throne of heaven tonight and go before our king. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask of thee tonight. We give you honor and give you praise tonight. So thankful tonight that we know that you have the answer before the problem ever arose. And we give you honor and praise when we do. Just so thankful tonight for your goodness. My brother, good God, you are tonight. Every good, every perfect gift has come from you tonight. Everything good in our life is a direct result of the goodness of God in our life. I am so thankful and grateful tonight that we serve a good God given us a good salvation tonight to know that you loved us so much and you refused to live without us and gave your only begotten son gave Jesus to give his life so that we could have life and I am so thankful and grateful for the life of God that is in us tonight the very soul life of God the very nature of God we give you honor tonight, give you praise and give you glory tonight just so thankful tonight for the precious blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sin tonight knowing tonight that we stand forgiven, knowing that our sins have been remitted tonight. Thank God, Lord, tonight that we don't have a past. I'm thankful that our past have been, has been just been washed away by the blood and, and to know that, 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 that we had a new beginning the day that we came to you. We're just so thankful for the genesis that began in all of our lives. New beginning. We give you praise tonight. We do. And we're so thankful and grateful tonight, Father, for the privilege we have together here in this house. It's thankful tonight that we have a place we can't gather, a place that we can come together with, like, with people like Precious Faith, that we can come together to worship you. We can come together to exalt the name of the Lord here tonight. I give you praise for that. So thankful for this facility. 
so thankful tonight for the people that are here. Every family, every home representative tonight. Lord, I plead the blood over tonight, believing that, Lord, you're going to meet the need of their life. I know there's not any here tonight that I know we, we all have needs tonight. We all have issues. None of us have got it all together tonight. We have needs of our own personal lives. And, Lord, we're, we're just looking to you to continue to move in the hearts and lives of your people. In this house, Lord, we're just believing, Lord, that, that you're going to continue to bless your people continue to breathe upon them and continue to heal and touch and restore in the hearts and lives of the, of the people that are here in this house Lord some are sick with cancer Lord we're just believing that this year is going to be a year of healing believing Lord this year coming will be a year of deliverance believing Lord tonight that whatever the need is and whatever needs to be done in the lives of your people believing Lord that this year will be the year of fulfillment to the faithful believing Lord that that, that we are going to meet the requirement of faithfulness Believing that, Lord, fulfillment is going to come. And we give you praise tonight and give you glory for those things, Lord. We know that that, that that has not materialized yet, but it's going to. And we give you praise tonight. We're just so thankful to know that you told us in your word that whatsoever things we desire that we would pray, believe we received them, and we shall have them. And tonight we're just believing that we receive them. Lord, we're just walking in divine faith tonight, believing, Lord, tonight that those things shall come to pass in our lives. Lord, we love you tonight. Every name on that prayer list tonight, Father, you know every need you know. We just pray before the throne of God, believing, Lord, you're going to continue to work in their lives and believing you to touch and do what only you can do in their lives, Lord. Tonight, we want to pray for our nation tonight. Lord, our nation is in desperate need. We stand in desperate need tonight. It's a, a nation that is divided. Lord, you said in your word that a nation divided cannot stand, a house divided cannot stand. And Lord, a nation divided cannot stand. Tonight, I pray for our president. I pray for our vice president, the leader of this country. Lord, I, I pray for tonight. These political parties, Lord, are just simply dividing this nation every way you turn. Tonight, we pray for our nation. God, we're in desperate need tonight. We are. We're in desperate need of, of a nation to be unified. I pray tonight, oh God, that you would raise up the righteous seed that would take their place in a political ring that we could see this nation turn back to you. There's a battle, there's a struggle now, Lord, on this, right in the midst of this nation. We're believing, Lord, tonight that, that our leaders will come together for the betterment of the people. I pray, God, tonight that you will help this nation. Lord, we need to get back to what we were founded upon. And that is in God we trust. If our leaders would just turn to you, Everything would work out all right, Lord. I'm praying tonight, God, that you'll suddenly begin to move within this nation. We love you tonight. We do. So thankful for your presence in this house here tonight. So thankful that, that, that Lord, as we gather here, we wasn't here just a few moments till you showed up in your presence. And we give you praise tonight. We do. Holy Spirit, we invite you to continue to stay in this meeting tonight. Every song that is sang, every word that is spoken tonight may be done to glorify the Lord here tonight. That is our prayer. That is our aim here tonight. That is that is what our that is what our desire is is to magnify the name of the Lord Jesus in this house here tonight. And Father, whatever is accomplished in this house here tonight, we will certainly give you praise and glory for it all. For we ask it in Jesus, mighty and mighty name. Hallelujah. To the Lord God. Hallelujah.
of the world that he had a plan to save us all. Yes. That's pretty good, ain't it? I'm glad he loves us that much. Amen. Amen. What a hope we have. Amen. He's worthy tonight. We have any testimonies tonight before we turn to Pastor Lewis or whoever's preaching tonight. Hi, Mark. You all know I had that son bug and uh, about five days after I had an angel was going to come down with the baby, but she was real nervous about it. And uh, I can tell you how that prayer was answered. Jeffrey got quarantined. <laughs> but whatever, amen. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. That's great. You have not sometimes because we That's ask not. That's right. That really hit me the other day. So many things I've been dealing with, and I ain't been really asking for nothing, but yet just dealing with stuff. You ever get in that situation realize yeah, that yeah. all I've been doing the last little bit is tolerating uh, facilitating, aggravating, and torturing myself and even ask God to do anything in this situation. Really, what am I doing? Wake up. Yeah. Amen. amen. You get in a rut sometimes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to shake yourself out of it. Realize he still says, cast all your cares upon him That's for right. he yeah. cares yeah. for you. Yeah. Amen. I can only do what I can do. That's right. But what can God do if I give it to him? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. amen. Any other testimonies tonight? And so I said, then I just, I got up and held on. 
Can you show me drive it? No, I'm going. We're going to go down and just get prayed for. <coughs> so when I came in and the, girl, the ladies were here and gathered and they prayed for me, you know, the pain was there. I, the thing is, is me accepting, me letting God, you know, work in me, or me lining myself up with the Word, and lining up, you know, lining, lining my healing up with the Word. You know, I'm healed. It's up to me. It's up to me to have faith that my body is healed. It's not supposed to be in there. He's going to keep saying, you know, the pain will keep coming back. It's going to come back. You're not healed. You're not healed. I'm telling you, when those ladies, they prayed for me twice, two times. But when they got done the second time, the pain had ceased in my leg. The nerve pain had ceased. I'm, I'm still sore. It's reminded, but it reminds me of what he took away. He took away the nerve pain, which was a crazy pain. And I just thank him for that. I just praise him for that. You know, sometimes I think we have to come together. You know, I know, and we've been taught this many, 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 many times that, you know, I can get this out of me. I can pray. I can bind the spirit of any kind of thing that's in my body and put peace with. But I know last night I wasn't binding nothing. Yesterday I wasn't binding nothing. I was in so much pain. I was just, I just, I just couldn't get where I needed to be. But when I come together with the sisters, with the, you know, with, with them praying with me, then I got it. You know, I got this, I got the enough encouragement, enough strength, and, and enough saying that, you know, that, you know, no, you're not supposed to be here. You, you have no right to be here. Right. So I just, I just praise him. I praise him for that. And I thank him. I thank him for that. And that's Amen. one thing. And I'm like, he's at work tonight. But I've got to give God thanks for this. So his blood condition, he deals with it. Y'all know all about his blood condition. He, uh, we went back uh, a week ago and... She said that she didn't see no more. She wants to see him in a year just to see. She said all the blood, the blood work is in order. The numbers are great. And I praise God for that. That you know he don't have to have those phlebotomies anymore. And uh, I mean he has to, he'll go back in six months for uh, just a phlebotomy to see how the numbers are. But she says that she feels with the last few numbers that that they got it under control. And he said, We don't have any control, God has any control. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Anybody else? My daddy's supposed to be, uh, Kepler's supposed to be calling today for a job interview. So I'm going to go ahead and thank God for that job. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's great. Amen. Amen. What do think about that? That's great. Anybody else?
Phillips. I want to thank you, good Lord, for being here. I, I took a nap when I come home from my rest this morning where I got my rib bruised for the last two days. I felt pretty good. When I woke up, I couldn't even breathe hardly. It was like a knife going in me, and I thought, man, what am I going to do? Matt's going to kill me if I can't go to church tonight. <laughs> but I, around 5 o'clock, man, it just it eased up. It still hurt me, but it eased up a lot. Man, man. Praise the Lord. That's great. I'm glad you're here. I thoroughly enjoyed that song tonight. Amen. He knows my name. Called him in. Said, man, if he could forgive me all my sins. If that ain't us, he should ask you to hit after every one of us. Knows our names. He knew everything we've ever done. But yet he says, you can be a part of the kingdom anyway. Amen. That's pretty good. It don't get much better than that. If you can't get excited about that kind of song, then you forgot about what you were born again about, right? Amen. Anybody else tonight? All right, Reverend. It's all you. It's all you. All day. My turn. Are you sure? I'm sure. They're ready. They look eager. You better get it. They don't know what they're getting into. They sing it. Pastor, you can sing Carrie Happy Birthday if you want. Who? Carrie Birthday today. When's your birthday? Today's your birthday? Oh, wow. Oh. Happy birthday, Terry. Come here. Y'all ready? Yes. Yeah. On three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Carrie. Happy birthday.
Let's go downstairs. You go downstairs, we go. And we'll get started. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Love that song, Brother Kevin. Love that song, man. Love that song. Oh, we were all Lazarus at one time. I said we were all Lazarus at one time. I say we were all Lazarus at one time. Every one of us. Amen. Dead, was we not? Walking dead men. Walking dead women. Walk around dead in sins and trespasses. But thank God the Master called your name. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to Daniel chapter 6. I'm going back to Daniel tonight for a little while. And I'll be going back to chapter 2 also, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. That's where, that's where we'll go. I was going another route tonight, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get released from this. I just, I just settled in today, and this is where we're going. So, this is what we're going to be doing tonight. God is good, is He not? Amen. Appreciate that platform tonight. They just doing awesome tonight. Just awesome. Awesome presence tonight. Thank God. Thank you very much. All of you on that platform tonight. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for blessing us tonight. I said thank y'all for blessing us tonight. Amen. Well, I might be the only one in here. But us. That includes all of us. Okay. All right. Okay. Daniel chapter 6 tonight. We've been talking about, for the last little while, we've been, actually I guess it's the first Sunday. Uh, First Wednesday, first Sunday, whenever the first was, when it was. Done off track of time now. But we have been talking about uh, this new year, 2019, as being the year of fulfillment to the faithful. And I'm going to continue on that. I don't know. I'm going to be there a little while longer because I really feel like this is very, very important that we get this at the first part of this year. And I really feel this. I really feel this. I really believe this. That this will be the year of fulfillment of some people's lives in this house. Yeah. But the condition is, the condition we've got to meet is we've got to be faithful. Amen. We've got to be faithful. Yes. And I believe with all of my heart that it will be a year that some people in this house will, will actually get to a place where there will be some things in their life fulfilled because God honors faithfulness. And they're going, to, they're going to be blessed, all right? Now, let's get started. I'm going, I'm going to say some things I've already been over. I'm going to say them again. And you know something? If I feel like I've got to say them again, I'll say them again Sunday. And if I don't feel like you've got it, I'll say it again Wednesday. But I'm going to keep on saying this until we get it. Until I feel like we've got it, and the Spirit of God says let's move on to something else. So tonight we're going to talk about faithfulness again. Now, when we talk about faithfulness, Faithfulness means trustworthy. It means trustful. When we mention faithfulness, we're talking about being trustworthy, being trustful. And the thing that we need to ask ourselves is when it comes to faithfulness, am I trustworthy? Can God trust me? Can God trust you? Can God trust me to display faithfulness to him. Can God rely on me? Can God rely on you to carry out his word, his will, his way on this planet, in your life, wherever your life, whatever your life may consist of? Can God trust you to carry out his will on your job site? Can God trust you to carry out his word, to carry out his ways, wherever you may go? You and I are God's hands and his feet. Can he trust you and I to carry out his will? Can he trust you? Can he trust you and I to be his distribution center? I'll say that again. Can he trust you and I to be his distribution center? He gives for you to give. Give and it shall be. Can he trust you and I to be his distribution center? On the screen, one function of faithfulness is to equip you and I to exercise stewardship over God's goods or to exercise or to be God's managers over His goods. 
can God put in your hands or in my hands and trust you to do what he wants done with what he puts in your hands? Can he trust you to give and it shall be given unto you? Can he trust you and I to give as he has given unto us? Can we be trusted? Can we, are we trustworthy? See, this, all this has got to do with faithfulness. And I'm going to get into some things later on that people are going to be very comfortable and probably won't like it. But it all has to do with faithfulness. There's more to this than just coming to terms. When we talk about faithfulness, we're not only talking about church attendance, but we're talking about every area of our life. Faithfulness affects every area of our life and God honors, He honors faithfulness. Faithfulness, 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 faithfulness. And that is what will equip us to get to the point where we can exercise authority over God's goods. And God is looking for faithful men and women that He can entrust His goods to. That they will distribute what He puts into their hands. That they will not hoard it up, but they will give as it is given unto them. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. A very familiar scripture we all know. Been here, been here a hundred times in this house. Proverbs 26. A faithful man who can find. In other words, you can find them. The scripture is not saying you can't find them. You can find them. But what he means by that, I guess the message is, is that this, this, is, a, this is a rare breed. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of that rare breed. I want to be found faithful in the service that God has given me to do. I want to be found faithful should He come. I want to be found faithful. Should I leave this world tonight, I want to be found faithful. 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 Are we trustworthy? Can God trust us with His goods? Whatever he puts into your hands, whatever he, he gives you, can he trust you? Are you reliable? Are you dependable? Two benefits, two spiritual biblical benefits, right real quick. We touched on we touch them, we touch them again, of being faithful. I don't mean to be repetitious, but I am. So therefore, I probably shouldn't say I don't mean to be repetitious because I do mean to be repetitious, but I'm just trying to get you to like me and not be repetitious. But I'm going to be repetitious. Two biblical, two biblical benefits of being faithful. One, one, one benefit is the eyes of the Lord are upon the faithful of the land. Psalm chapter 101 verse 6. God says, mine eyes are upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. Being faithful is one way to make sure God's eyes are upon you. Faithfulness is a way that will guarantee that God will always be involved in your business. If you want God involved in your life and a guarantee that God will be involved in your life, then faithfulness is a key that will get God involved in your life. I'm telling you, you won't have to worry about your enemies or your troubles if you will just, when God's eyes are upon you, but His eyes are upon the faithful of the land. And if we will get faithful, God will get involved in our lives. Amen. Amen. We, but listen, and the reason, the reason, the, the reason God will get involved in our lives is because when you live a faithful life on earth, it demands faithfulness from heaven. Because God's eyes are upon the faithful of the land. When you live a faithful life on earth, it demands faithfulness from heaven because God gave us the promise that his eyes would be upon the faithful of the land. I'm going to say that again. When you live a faithful life on earth, it demands faithfulness from heaven because God said that his eyes are upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with him. So if we live a faithful life on earth, it will demand, a, it will demand faithfulness from heaven. Because God gave us his promise. And God gave us his word that his eyes would be upon the faithful of the land. That they may dwell with me. Second benefit right real quick. We're going to hurry and go on. Second benefit right real quick. Stop Proverbs chapter 28 verse 20. A faithful man shall abound with what? Shall abound with what? Blessings. Blessings. Abound means to be fully supplied. To be filled. To abound means to be overflowed. To be, to, to be overflowed with, with blessings. 
When you are faithful to God, He will cause the flow of the blessing to continue in your life. If you're interested in the blessings of God and want to flow in the blessing, want to abound in the blessing, then faithfulness is the key in order to abound in the blessings of God. Amen. Keep being faithful and the blessing will keep showing up in your life. You will be blessed. Why? Because, because, because God honors faithfulness where faithfulness is displayed. Hallelujah. Where faithfulness is displayed, gain is obtained. I think that's on there somewhere. Where faithful, God honors faithfulness. And where faithfulness is displayed, then gain is obtained. But it requires faithfulness. God honors faithfulness. And where faithfulness is displayed on this earth, gain is obtained because of faithfulness. Yes. 2019 is going to be a year of fulfillment to the faithful. So I want to stand one more time and tell this Wednesday night crowd that you need to get excited about this new year and start where you are right now. If you haven't been faithful, start right now being faithful. If there's an area in your life where you are not faithful, turn it around and let the blessings of God begin to flow in your life because I promise you, if you will get faithful, this year will be a year of fulfillment. You need to get excited about what God is going to do in your life, in your home, in your family, whatever the need is. If you will get faithful to God this upcoming year, there will be fulfillment coming to your life. Glory to God. But we just need to get excited. We need to believe God and His Word. If you believe His prophets, the Word that He says, you shall prosper, glory to God. If you'll just believe the Word of God and believe what God is saying through, through, through His servant, I promise you this year will be a year of fulfillment if we'll just get faithful to God. Because God honors faithfulness. He honors faithfulness. Or faithfulness is, a, is, is displayed, gain, gain is obtained. Where we display faithfulness to God. Can I can get an amen from anybody? Amen. amen, preacher. All right. When you listen, throughout this Bible, I'm going, I'm going to Hebrews 11, so you just look on the screen. Throughout this Bible, these blessed men and women were faithful. Men and women of God. Faithful men and women of God. And when you go to this Bible, the glories never came out of the easy times. They always came out of the hard times. Hard places. When I say this year will be a year of fulfillment to the faithful, it doesn't mean that you're going to slide through this year with no problems. You're going to have problems. In this world you shall have tribulation, Jesus said. If you're not out of this world, if you don't want no problem, then we'll just put you out of your misery. <laughs> and you can go on. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen to Hebrews chapter 11. Faith chapter. The faith chapter. These are, these are the heroes of faith. The heroes of faith. Hebrews chapter 11. Listen, listen, listen to this scripture. Listen to it. It's on the screen. New Living Translation. Listen to it. By faith. Now let me start at verse 32. How much more do I need to say? It would take me too long to recount the stories of faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jebedee, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms. Wow. Ruled with justice. Received what God had promised them. Listen. They shut the mouths of lions. Quenched the flames of fire. And escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle, put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. But others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at, and their backs were cut up with whips. Others were chained in prisons. Some died by stoning. Some were sawn in half. Others were killed with a sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. And these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. I read that to simply say this tonight. Listen to me. Listen to me. I read that to say this. Those people, they went through hell and back. 
You, you heard just a little bit what they went through. But brother, they went through this thing by faith. They, they stayed faithful to God through it all. It didn't matter how bad it got. It didn't matter how, how it didn't matter what was coming their way. They refused to denounce what they knew what they had on the inside of them. And they held on to God. They stayed faithful to God through it all. Surely to God, if those men and women can stay faithful to God going through all that, surely to God, we in 2019 can stay faithful to God Almighty. We have a New Testament. We have a Bible. We have the Holy Ghost on our side. We have a church. We have people of faith. We can go to God in prayer in Jesus' name. These people, they were looking toward that. They didn't have, some of them didn't have that. But thank God we had everything they didn't have. So there's no need for us to stumble around here. There's no need for us to fool around and fall off the edge of this thing. We need to hang on in there, brother. We need to hang on in there. And know, thank God, if we'll stay faithful to God, God will, God will honor faithfulness. Hallelujah. Where faithfulness is display, gain is obtained and we can go through this year knowing and believing that God Almighty is going to honor our faithfulness to Him and know, thank God, that He will come through with fulfillment in this year. Can I give an amen from anybody? Amen. Hallelujah. Faithfulness. Now, preacher, you just don't know what I'm... <laughs> we're still, we're still trying, we're still struggling trying to go to church in the rain. You think of the testimonies going to be in heaven and when they call on us to testify. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be kind of ashamed. Talk to me, somebody. We, we, we still struggle with these everyday little temporal things that really, compared to this, you've got to be kidding me. Compared to what I just read to you, with what we, little things we face and we, at least a little demon come by our way, we just want to puff up and just pull the drape shut, lock the doors, take the phone off the hook. Don't dare go to church. Don't dare go to church. That's the wrong place to go when you're like that. That's the first place you better run to. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't tell me, don't tell me we can't be faithful. We can be faithful. Yeah. And we must be faithful. Can I get an amen from me today? Yeah. These men and women in chapter 11 in Hebrews were faithful men and women. And, and, and even some of, and even in, in some of the darkest hours of their life, they remained faithful men. Amen. Some were tortured. Think about this. But yet they refused to turn from God in order to be set free. And some were, some were cut off with whips. Some were put in prisons. Some were stoned to death. Some were even sawed in half. Hear this preacher. Others were killed with a sword. Wow. But, the, the, but God gave us the guarantee. He gave us the promise. He said, my eyes will be upon the faithful of the land. Amen. And some of, these, some of these even shut the mouths of lions. Right. Scripture says they, they, quenched, they quenched the flames of fire. Yeah. Some of them just wouldn't burn, man. They, they doused them in kerosene and they wouldn't burn. Right. Shoot. Amen. Their weakness was turned into strength. They became strong in battle. Scripture says even some of the women, even some of the women received their loved ones back again from death. And all the glories came out of the hard places. They didn't have, they didn't have pedicures. Hey! They didn't have pedicures with long bar backs on, buddy. I think sometimes I need to get them old wooden Pews we used to have here that had cracks in when you sat down to peach your butt. People thought you was in the spirit. You just hollered because you peach, peach your butt. Walk out here bruises all over your butt because somebody sat down and squeezed that crack together and got your cheek caught in, the, in that crack. And it, oh! Well, he's happy, Lord. No, Pat, he's just in the spirit. You'd be honest. Right. We started all kinds of revivals with them old pews like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, praise God, preacher. You're crazy. I know I'm crazy. Okay. Let's go to Dan. Let me go to Dan. Let me, let me get to where I need to be. All right, i got to hurry. I'm going to be a long time getting through this. Now, this. This past Sunday morning, we, 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 we were in the book of Daniel. Okay? We were there. We're going back there tonight. And, 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 and I want to go back over just a few minutes because I want to recap some things and I, I want to look at some more things in, in Daniel's life. I was going 
I was going, I was going to the, I was going to look at the life of Moses tonight, because the scripture says that God said that Moses was faithful in all of his house. And I have some things about Moses that I'm going to bring out and I talk about. I just, I didn't, didn't, didn't get to release them, so I just I backed off of the last minute. Said, "Well, I'm going back to Daniel." So this is where we're at. Okay, let's go. Daniel chapter six. Let's go back in a little while. Can we go back a little while? Yeah. Go ahead, preacher. Okay, let's go back a little while. All right. Daniel chapter six. Let's read just a little bit. And we're, we're, we're going to cover some ground here in just a little bit. Daniel chapter 6. Let's go verse 1, verse 2, and 3. Start with it. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should, over, which, should, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over, over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, and the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole, the whole realm. Again, look, look at verse 3 again. One more time, look at it. One more time. Daniel was preferred above, distinguished above all the others. Why? The, the answer is in verse 3. Be, because an excellent spirit was in him. Right. Excellent means to stand out. So what made Daniel stand out above all the others? What was it that caused him to be so noticeable? Okay, verse 4. One more time, let's read it. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was for as much as he was faithful. faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. So for as much as he was faithful, faithful his faithfulness was responsible for his excellence. It was his faithfulness that caused him to stand out above everybody else. See, according to Scripture, there's something about faithfulness that, that, that will add excellence to your life. Faithfulness will, will add excellence to your, to your life. Amen. Faithfulness will. Anything, you want, anything we ought to do for God, it ought to be in excellence. Right. We're representing the king. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't care, I, don't care if you, I don't care if you're washing commodes, man. It ought to be, you ought to do your best washing that commode. Right. And if you're blessed to play, to, to play an instrument, you're blessed to sing, or you, God bless you to preach, God bless you to teach, God bless you to pray, whatever. It, everything ought to be done with excellence for the King of Kings, for the Kingdom of God. Amen. And faithfulness, faithfulness will add excellence to your life. Amen. Here's the message. Here's the message on the screen. See, it's the faithful man or the faithful woman that sets himself up or herself up for the, for the preferential treatment in life. It is the faithful man and woman that sets himself up for the blessing, for the flow, to abound to abound with blessing. It is the faithful man and the faithful woman that will set them up for preferential treatment in life from God. God will honor faithfulness. Yeah. Where faithfulness is displayed, gain is obtained. Hallelujah. Right. And when we talk about Daniel, we usually think about the lion's den. We think about Daniel being thrown in the den of lions. And the reason God showed up that the lion did for Daniel was because Daniel was faithful to pray. Before we was ever casted into the lions. Daniel never started to pray when he got into trouble. Daniel was faithful to pray before the trouble ever showed up. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Our problem is a lot of times we're not faithful to pray before the trouble shows up. And then we want to pray when the trouble shows up. And now the trouble is overtaken us because we haven't been faithful to pray before the trouble shows up. Daniel was a faithful, he, he was faithful to pray before the trouble ever showed up. Amen. Daniel never got faithful when, 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 when the problem showed up. Daniel was faithful before the problem showed up. Amen. And God said his eyes were upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with him. And, and that is what God did that night for Daniel when he was cast into being a lion. God showed up because God said my eyes are going to be upon the faithful of the land. And Daniel was faithful in every area of his life. Now, here's what I want you to see. I want to go back. Here's what I want you to see. Here's what, here's what I want you to cast your eye on here tonight. What's the progression? And we go through this. What's, what's the progression as, as Daniel goes from, from one season of his life to another season? 
What's the benefit of being faithful through each season of his life? And man, they some, they some scary scenes in these first six chapters of Daniel. Notice it. What's the progression? Daniel chapter 2. Let me get back over. Daniel, no, Daniel chapter 1. I'm sorry. Let's go back over. Daniel chapter 1. What's the progression as we go through this? In Daniel chapter 1, let me read verse number 8. Daniel chapter 1, verse number 8. Here we start. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the, of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now here, one more time, let me give you this. Daniel was faithful to live by his convictions. He was faithful to live by his conviction. The scripture says in verse 8 that he purposed in his heart that he would not eat the king's meat nor drink the wine. He purposed in his heart. In his heart. Daniel, he did not compromise on what he believed. No matter the danger, no matter what he thought could happen or could be the outcome, he did not compromise on his convictions. Even in the face of danger, even in certain death, like the, like the lion did, he stayed true to God. He remained faithful. Daniel was faithful to live by his convictions. Daniel purposed in his heart, verse 8 said, because before he ever left the house, he purposed in his heart that he would not eat the king's meat nor drink his wine. In other words, he would not participate in what God would not be pleased with. Here's a young man taken captive in a strange land. Nobody knows him. He knows nobody. His parents are probably dead. Nobody there to oversee what he's done or, or how he lives. Yet when it came to something that would make him compromise his conviction to be unfaithful to his God without any parental advice, without any pastoral guidance, he said no. Amen. Now look at me. I'm going to say this again. I said this Sunday morning over and over. It was just a plate of food. <laughs> My God, what? How do you want? Just a plate of food. Just steak and gravy, man. Little mashed potatoes. Maybe a little fried chicken. It was just a plate of food. But yet Daniel was so faithful to live his convictions, even a plate of food he would not compromise on. Watch me, watch, 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 watch. This is very important because this is, look at, this is where it started. This was the first starting point in Daniel chapter 1, way before he got into the little lions. You, you, you see, you lost me right there, buddy. You lost me right there. If he wasn't faithful over a plate of food, what would he have done once he got into the den of lions? Oh, come on, preacher, preach to me now. If he can't be, if he couldn't be faithful over a, over just a plate of food, what else would he compromise on? What else would he, what else would he let go of? If he, if he compromised on, on, on the plate of food and the king's wine, he would have never been ready for the dying den, for the den, the den of lions. What's the progression? God gets his servant ready. He gets us ready through every, 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 every problem, every, every dark season, every trial, every, everything coming our way. If there's a purpose in it, preparing us for what's ahead. But we've got to remain faithful to live our convictions. <clears throat> Watch that what? Can it go on? I go preach it going. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. What's the progression? What's that? What's, what, what, what? It starts out by compromise over just over a plate of food. Now we go to chapter two. Now it gets a little more serious in chapter two then. Now Daniel, Daniel, watch me now, watch me now. See now now, now things got serious now. Daniel now is, is, is facing death. Verse one, King Nebuchadnezzar dreamed a dream. 
And the dream left his spirit troubled. And, and, and the Bible says in verse 1 that sleep break from him. Sleep fed, fled from King Nebuchadnezzar. In verse 2, he called the musicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans to come and show him the dream. But now, he not only wants the interpretation, but now he wants the dream. Because the dream has left him. He's forgot what the dream was. And now he wants them to tell him not only, not only the interpretation, but now he said, I, you, I want you to tell me the dream. And, and after, after he called all these together, they, they told the king in verse 10, they said, King, there's not a man upon earth that could tell the king the dream. Maybe the interpretation. And, and, and I, believe they, I believe they would have told the king the interpretation. But I believe God made the king forget the dream. Because they could have told the interpretation. But now the dream has left him. Now he wants, be, he wants to be told the dream plus the interpretation. And, and, and these, these men that he called to tell him said, ain't a man on earth can tell you that. There's not a man here nowhere on this planet that can tell the king what he wants to know. And the Bible says the king became angry, very, 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 very furious. And he commanded all the wise men of Babylon to be destroyed, kill them all. And Daniel, Daniel sent word to the king. Daniel said, if you give me, give me, if you just give me, give me time. He said, I can tell you not only the interpretation, but I can tell you the dream. If you'll just give me a little bit of time. So the king, the king considered. He, he, he gave Daniel the time. In verse, 17, in verse 17, Daniel 2, the Bible says that Daniel went to his house and made this thing known to his three Hebrew brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And look what they did. They began to seek God concerning this secret. And in verse 19 in the Bible says that the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. See, God said, my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. What if Daniel would have compromised on the plate of food and the wine and went to the party and done something that God wasn't pleased with? He would have never been ready for chapter 2. Come on, somebody. He would have died. He would have, he would have, he would have been killed when, when the king said, kill all of these wise men. I have no need for them if they cannot tell me what I need to know. Amen. But because Daniel was ready for the little, good God Almighty, because Daniel was faithful in the little, the progression keeps mounting up. And, 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 and at the, by the time you get to chapter 6, because he was faithful in the little in chapter 1 of a plate of food, now he was ready for the biggie. For the biggie. Uh, y'all bored. Y'all bored. That's all right. Y'all just have to get bored because I'm going through this. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Daniel never waited. Listen to me. He never waited until the danger showed up to pray. He was faithful to pray before the danger showed up. God said, my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. Wow. wow. And then we, go to, then we go to Daniel chapter 3. Well, Daniel not, he, he, chapter 3 is about the fiery furnace. <coughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All three of these boys plus Daniel was taken by Nebuchadnezzar when Nebuchadnezzar, when he we invaded Jerusalem and he took them back to Babylon. He took all the intelligent ones, all the good looking ones, all the, all the healthy ones. He, he took back with him. And Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, were four of those that he took back. And these three were just like Daniel. They were, that they were men of strong convictions. And they remained faithful to live their convictions. They refused to bow. And because they refused to bow, they did not burn. They refused to bow to the God of their day. The story is, I don't want to go through all that story because all y'all know, know about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego where the king made this, made this big old statue, made this big old nine foot statue and he said, it's the sound of music, you bow down to this image. If you don't bow down to my image, I will put you, I will cast you in the burning fiery furnace. So while everybody was bowing, these three Hebrew boys were standing. They would not bow. They would not, they, they would not compromise on their convictions. They, 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 they would they would be faithful to live their convictions no matter the danger. Well, when he got back to the king, you know the story. Well, he brought him in. Is it true? Who is this God that will, that, 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 that will 
that, that will save you. But who is this God? And these, and, and these Hebrew boys looked at the king and said, King, now listen, the, the, there's no need us to even talk about them. We don't even need to go there. Because the God in whom we serve is able to deliver us from this burning fiery furnace and out of thy hand, O king. But if not, I like that, but if not faith. But if not, we still ain't going to bow to your God. So what did he do? He heated the furnace up seven times. Those three Hebrew boys in the fire furnace. The, the men that opened that door to the furnace were consumed by the, by the fire because it was so hot. And they cast three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Midigo, right into the fire, bound, buddy, cast them bound right into the fire. Well, what did the king do? He went over just a little while, looked into, into that furnace, and he looked at those and said, did we not cast three men in the fire? They said, yes, okay. Well, he said, I see four men loose. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they're walking around in the fire. And the fourth man looked like the fourth. He, he's in the form of the Son of God. I'm telling you, God said, my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. He'll go to the fiery furnace with you. He'll go to the lion den with you. He'll go wherever you go because his eyes will be upon the faithful of the land. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. It doesn't matter how dangerous it is. I'm telling you, God's eyes will be upon the faithful of the land and he'll follow you wherever you go. He'll go with you because his eyes will be upon you. If you end up in the fiery furnace, I got news for you. There'll be a fourth man in the fire, glory to God. I said there'll be a fourth man in the fire. I, you know, you know, you know, the you know, they think about this story. The king, the king cast them in there and, and, and he had to command them to come out of the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, come up out of that fire. He had to, he had to make them come out. Because why would you want to leave when the fourth man's there with you? They walk around in the fire unharmed. They bring them out there and they smell the smoke what they moan. Oh, thank burnt off was what they were thought they were bound with. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Not a hair on, not a hair on them was seeing anywhere. Not even the smell of smoke. God's eyes are upon the faithful of the land. Yeah, Daniel wasn't in that one. I just had to throw that in there, so I just need to move on. But we get to move on. Move, move on to move on to chapter four. I gotta hurry up because I ain't gonna end it. Daniel now, now, chapter chapter four. Chapter four of Daniel. Let me go here. Right real quick. Come on, let's go. Come on. Here now, Daniel come before 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 uh, King Nebuchadnezzar again. Daniel chapter four. Let me read verses four through eight. Come on, stay with me. Pinch yourself. Don't get bored, but pinch yourself. Glory to God. Slap yourself upside the head. Listen to me. Chapter 4, verse 4. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of, uh, of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the musicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, soothsayers. I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the, the interpretation thereof. Ah, oh, but at last, hallelujah, here come the man. Glory to God, here come the man. But at last, Daniel came. Hallelujah. Oh, faithful Daniel. I said, oh, faithful Daniel. I said, oh, faithful Daniel. Where do you find Daniel at? You'll find the eyes of the Lord. Oh, Lord. I said, where do you find Daniel at? You'll find the eyes of the Lord gazing all around there. And here come Daniel. Glory to God. Watch this. Look at verse number eight. Oh, but... Then, then, then uh, verse, verse, verse number eight. But at last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the Holy God. And before him I told the dream. I told the dream, saying, "Watch it. Watch, watch, watch." Daniel, watch this. What? Daniel risked. Watch. Get, get up with it. He risked being killed. What do you do? You got the interpretation. What do you do? Do you say it? To smooth it over? Do you say it with lightness? Do you tell part of the truth? What if the interpretation is bad? It could mean death. Here Daniel is in chapter 4, a great man, chief of the governors. And now he stands to lose it all. Please put yourself in Daniel's place. The king wants to know the interpretation, but what if it ain't good? Whoa. Daniel was faithful to live out his convictions. Watch. What do you do? He was a man that was faithful to live by his convictions. And part of those convictions was to tell the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth shall help you God. Hallelujah. Verse 24 
through 27. Let me read then. This is the interpretation. Here he comes. O king, this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the king, that they shall drive you from men. Boy, ain't that something to tell him? Good God. And thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. They shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. Seven times shall pass over thee. And thou shalt know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomever, whosoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, I ain't going to read that. I ain't going to go that far. Look, 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 look. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at the interpretation. He stood before the king and he said, King, here it is. You're going to have to stop sinning. You're going to have to be merciful to the poor. And God just might live in your days. But if not, if not, watch. But if not, look at, look at it. Look, drop down around. Drop down verse 29. Look, look on the screen. Verse 29. And new, new living translation. Look on the screen. Look on the screen. Look on the screen. Look on the screen. Look at it. Twelve months later, one year passed. Time he gave the interpretation. No doubt he thought Daniel missed it. Hello? Hello? No doubt he thought the man of God missed it. Twelve months later, he was taking a walk on the flat roof of the palace, of the royal palace in Babylon, of Nebuchadnezzar. As he looked out across the city, he said, Look at this great city of Babylon. By my almighty power, I built this beautiful city as a royal residence to display my majestic splendor. My, my, my. While these words were still in his mouth, a voice came down from heaven. O King Nebuchadnezzar, this message is for you. You are no longer ruler of this kingdom. You will be driven from human society. You will live in the fields with the wild animals. You will eat grass like a cow. Seven times, seven periods of time will pass, will pass while you live this way until you learn that the most high rules of, over the kingdom of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. At the, that same hour, the judgment was fulfilled and Nebuchadnezzar was driven from human society. He ate grass like, as, like a cow. He was drenched with the dew of heaven. He lived this way until his hair was long as eagle's feathers and and his nails were like bird, bird's claws. And after this time had passed, I, Nebuchadnezzar, listen then, looked up to heaven. Hallelujah. My sanity returned. I praised and worshiped the Most High and honored the one who lives forever. His rule is everlasting and his kingdom is eternal. All the people of the earth are nothing compared to him. He does as he pleases among the angels of heaven and among the people of the earth. No, no one can stop him or say to him, what do you mean by doing these things? And when my sanity returned to me, so did my honor and glory and kingdom. My advisors and nobles sought me out, and I was restored as head of my kingdom with even greater armor, with honor than before. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and glorify and honor the King of Heaven. All His acts are just and true, and He is and He is able to to, to humble the proud. Nebuchadnezzar was proud and God humbled the king. Amen. What if Daniel had not been ready for this one? Would Nebuchadnezzar would have never experienced and saw the Most High. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. A king come to know who the Most High was because Daniel lived, was faithful to live his convictions. I would have been very hesitant to tell the king the interpretation of that dream. Because chances are, if it ain't good, they want to take your head off. But Daniel was faithful to leave his convictions. He would tell the truth no matter what. Wow. Anybody see the progression? You see my paying attention now? Are y'all asleep or what? Amen. Anybody seen the progression here? <laughs> my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. And God followed him. His eyes was upon Daniel because Daniel was faithful to live his convictions. Wow. 
Man, I'll tell you right now, is it hooty fruity? Hooty fruity. Wow. Chapter five. Next scene. Next scene. Look, look, look at the next scene. If you don't like reading like that, I'm going to read the entire chapter five. <laughs> so you probably will get bored here in a minute. Chapter 5, what's it? What, what, what? Daniel once again finds himself standing before the king. Once again, he's called to interpret a dream. Watch me now. But this is another king. This is not the same king. Daniel risks <coughs> being killed. So what do you do? He wants the interpretation. Do you say it with lightness? Make it as light as you can? Do you only tell part truth or the good stuff? What if the interpretation is bad? This is another king. This is a different king. Now, this is a different king. This is not Nebuchadnezzar. This is a different king. Daniel doesn't know what this king is going to do. He will go again. He will go again. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. Daniel was faithful to live his convictions. And one of those convictions was to tell the truth. Okay. That's so, right. Chapter 5. Next scene. Here we go. Right, will, 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 will you stay with me just a few more minutes? And I'll get you out of here. Will you do that? I don't believe none of you. Let's go. Chapter 5. On the screen. New Living Translation. On the screen. Look at the screen. I want you to follow with me on the screen. Makes it verse. I love New Living Translation in this one. In this story. Many years later, King Belshazzar gave a great feast for 1,000 of his nobles, and he drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking the wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver cups that his predecessor, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. He wanted to drink from them with his nobles, his wives, his concubines. So they brought these gold cups taken from the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem, and the king and his nobles, his wives, his concubines, drank from them. While they drank from them, they praised their idols made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly, get the picture of this man. Suddenly, they saw fingers of a human hand writing on the plaster wall of the king's palace. near the lampstand. The king himself saw the hand as it wrote, and his face turned pale with fright. His knees knocked together in fear, and his leg gave way beneath him. I'd say he sobered up right quick. <laughs> That scared the devil out of him. Look at him. He's in pitiful shape right now. After seeing that, a human hand began to write on the wall. Watch. And the king shouted before the enchanters, the astrologers, the fortune tellers to be brought before him. He said to these wise men of Babylon, who can read this writing and tell me what it means, will be dressed in purple robes of royal honor and will, get, will have a gold chain placed around his neck. He will become the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Hmm, pretty good reward. But when all the king's wise men had come in, none of them could read the writing or tell what it meant. So the king grew even more alarmed, and his face turned pale. His nobles, too, were shaken. Here comes a but, man. Get ready to change now. There's a but. But when the, queen, when the queen mother heard what was happening, she hurried to the banquet hall. She said to Belshazzar, Long live the king. Don't be so pale and frightened. There is a man. Hallelujah. There's a man. In, here come the man. Here come the man. Hallelujah. There's a man in your kingdom who is within him the spirit of the holy gods. During Nebuchadnezzar's reign, this man, this man was found to have insight, understanding, and wisdom like that of the gods. Your predecessor, the king, your predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar, made him chief over all the musicians, enchanters, astrologers, and fortune tellers of Babylon. This man, Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar, has exceptional ability. King James has, has an excellent spirit. It is filled with divine knowledge and understanding. He can interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel, and he will tell you what the writing means. Call for Daniel. Because the eyes of the Lord upon the righteous. Mm -hmm. Daniel was brought in before the king. And the king asked him, Are you Daniel, one of the, one of the exiles from, from, brought from, from Judah by my predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar? I have heard that you have the Spirit of God within you and that you are filled with insight, understanding, and wisdom. 
My wise men enchanters have tried to read the words on the wall and tell me the meaning, but they could not do it. I am told that you give interpretation and solve the difficult problem. If you can read these words, tell me their meaning. And you will be clothed in purple robes of royal honor, royal honor, and you will have a gold chain placed around your neck. You will become the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Daniel answered the king, I like this, keep your gifts. <laughs> don't need them, don't want them. Keep your gifts or give them to someone else. I like that, or someone else. But I, I, I'll tell you what the writing means, but you can keep your stinking gift. I don't want you gift. Okay? Mm -hmm. Here you go. Your majesty, the most high God, look at him, gave sovereignty, mastery, Magi ma glory, and honor to your predecessor, Nebuchadnezzar. He made him so great that people of all races and nations and language trembled before him in fear. He killed those who wanted to kill, spared those he wanted to spare. He honored those he wanted to honor, disgraced them, those he, he wanted to disgrace. But when his heart and mind was puffed up with arrogance, pride, he was brought down from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven from human society to give him the mind of wild animals, lived among the wild donkeys, ate grass like a cow, drenched with dew from heaven, until he learned that the Most High God rules over the kingdom of the world and appoints anyone who desires to rule over them. You are his successor. Now, this is Daniel now. Standing before a king, you don't know. You are his successor, Belshazzar, and you knew all this. Oh, my. Oh, Daniel, you're getting ready to mess up, man. You knew all this, yet you have not humbled yourself, for you have proudly defiled the Lord God of heaven and have had these cups from his temple brought before you. You and your nobles and your wives and concubines have, uh, have been drinking wine from them while praising gods of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wood, and stone, gods that neither see nor hear nor know anything at all. But you have not honored the God who gives you the breath of life and controls your destiny. So God has sent this hand to write this message. And this message that was written I don't have Look at her and leave her. When they means number. God has numbered the days of your reign and has brought it to, to an end. To kill means weight. You have weighed on the balances and have not measured up. Parson means divided. Your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then at Belshazzar's command, Daniel was dressed in purple robes. A gold chain was hung around his neck and, his, and was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Look at the watch, 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 Lord, sorry. That very night, Belshazzar, the Babylonian king, was killed. Daniel was a man that was faithful Amen. to live his convictions. No matter the danger, the outcome that was before him. Right. He never knew this king. And he stood before the king. And he more or less said, I won't be in your shoes tonight. Because you checking out tonight, Lord. <laughs> you out of here. Because of your prideful ways. How dare you? How dare you dishonor the holy things of God? And the king went out to eternity that night. And the man of God that stayed faithful, stayed faithful to his convictions, was not back down. But he looked at the king and said, this is the interpretation. We're in chapter 5 now. And the man's still faithful. The man is still faithful to live, to be true to his convictions. Can I get an amen from anybody? Amen. I, still hear, I, I still hear God. I still hear his word. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. Wow.
And then we come to chapter 6. And I'm, I'm, I'm done with chapter 1. Once you get chapter 6, I'm done. But i got to go to chapter 6 first. <laughs> now we come to chapter 6. Okay? Somebody say, hurry, preacher. Hurry, preacher. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> okay, let's go to chapter 6 now. I got, this is the last one right here. Anybody, has anybody seen the progression thus far? Yeah. It all came back to what we read in the word. There was an excellent spirit found in it. He was faithful. Now we get to the life deep. Daniel chapter 6. Here comes the biggie now, man. Here comes the biggie. Verse, verse 4. Verse, verse four. I'm going to read verse 4 one more time. In the presence of the prince sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find an occasion of fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error of fault found, found in him. Notice the story one more time. I'm going to hurry. But these princes, these princes, they sought to find a ground of complaint uh, against Daniel with regard to the kingdom. But they couldn't find none because Daniel was faithful. So they said, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't uh, find a complaint against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But we might find a complaint in connection with the law of his God. What? See, come, 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 come. See, you're, you're, you're overlooking something. They had to have seen something in Daniel that was different for them to know the law of his God. See, Daniel was preferred above the others. Jealousy and envy began to sit in. And they began to watch Daniel. And Daniel was faithful. And they watched Daniel. And they knew what Daniel did. They knew Daniel was a man of prayer. Because Daniel prayed three times a day. Oh, y'all ain't injured now. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all listen to me? See, they, he, they couldn't find any fault concerning the kingdom, but now they knew Daniel was faithful to his God. Now we'll find occasion again. Now, what's the mind that they begin to work now? Well, they just they just set the man up here now. They, they, they just they just said, well, we, 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 we'll find a concern in his God. So they followed Daniel and, and sure enough, found him home. And they knew it. They knew it before. He, they found him faithful to pray three times a day to his God. Daniel, would he would faithfully get on his knees with his window open toward the temple and he would pray faithfully three times every every day. Okay? Then, okay, now they, they got together, they talked to the king, and they they, 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 talk, they talked to the king to pass a decree or law, and whosoever makes a petition to any god uh, or, 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 or man, except you, O king, for 30 days, shall be cast within line. And the king passed it. Okay? In verse 10, verse 10, when Daniel, look at verse 10 on the screen, when Daniel knew the writing was signed, what did he do? Did he go, did he get, did he get hysterical? Did he go to the doctor to get some nerve pills? <laughs> well, what, what did he do? Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, Daniel, once he knew it was him, he, he went to his house. <laughs> Ain't that something? Went to his house, and his window being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. Well, blessed be God. Hmm. He, he knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed. Huh. Gave thanks to his God as he did four times. As he, always, he, he did as he always did. But here's the thing, man. These men knew what Daniel would do because Daniel was faithful to pray. That's what he did. They went to the king and they said, King, Daniel pays no attention to you. He doesn't pay attention to your petition. He, right now he's praying before his God. He did three times a day, King. He, he's done what he done. He hasn't changed. He's still doing what he's always done. I love that. He's guilty. Kill him, shoot him, put him in the line. He's guilty, he's guilty, guilty, guilty. Would you let me feel guilty like that? I would. He's doing the same thing he's always done. Opinion on mine. Daniel remained faithful to live his convictions. Even in the face of danger. 
read them down. And as Paul Harvey would say, and you know the rest of the story. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you anyway. The king cast Daniel into the alliance. But watch this. Before Daniel left the presence of the king, I love what he said. I love this man. The king said to Daniel, verse 16, he said, Daniel, your God, in whom you serve continually, faithfully, he will deliver you. <laughs> I love that. It's heathen king. He did it. He ain't the he knew more than most Christians know today. He's a heathen. The God in whom you serve continue. The God you serve faithfully, Daniel, he will deliver you. Uh -huh. Look at that. And we're going. I'm almost done. And the king, everybody the king stayed up all night, the Bible said. All night with fasting. No entertainment, no wine, no women. Sleep fled from him. King walked the floor all night in his palace. And Daniel slept all night with the lions in the den. Well, that's something off that picture, but that's what it is. Because you know why? Why Daniel slept with the lions? Because God said, my eyes shall be upon the faith of the land. Daniel laid on the belt of Leo the lion and slept all night. And the king walked the floor all night, troubled in his spirit. Wow. Huh. And then in verse 19, at the break of day, the king rose. He went, and the Bible says he went and hastily did lions. And as he came here, he cried to Daniel, verse 20. He said, Oh, Daniel! Servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, faithfully, been able to deliver you from the lion? Oh, God. <laughs> Verse 31, 22, Daniel said, go, said to the king, O king, live forever. O king, live forever. Hallelujah. Daniel said, that, Daniel said, My God sent his angels, shut the lion's mouth, and they have not harmed me because I was found in innocency. I was found blameless before him, and also before you, O king, have I done no hurt. So why was Daniel, why, why was he found in innocence? Why was he found blameless? Because of his faithfulness. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the Lamb. One more time. God honors faithfulness. Where faithfulness is displayed, gain is obtained. The blessing shows up on the faithful men and faithful women of God. And you, you, you finish the book of Daniel, and you'll see what, as the progression went, Daniel given an end time revelation. Because Daniel was found. And it didn't change. I said it didn't change. <clears throat> no matter what he was facing. He stayed faithful to live true to his convictions. Man. Abraham had the blessing on him. Everybody, everybody got hooked up to Abraham. was blessed. A lot got blessed because of Abraham. Galatians 3 and 9 on the screen. I'm closing. So then they which be of faith are blessed with who? Abraham. There's another one in the Word of God. Faithful Abraham. It's true throughout the Bible. Those blessed men and women were faithful men and women to God. Watch this. Hebrews 3 and 2. Hebrews 3 and 2. Says also, says, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. In verse 5, Hebrews 3. Again, and Moses verily was faithful in all his house. Numbers 12 and 7. We're going to go on the screen. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. Why? It holds true. A faithful man, a faithful woman, shall abound with, with blessings. Flow in the blessing. God said, My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. I declare and decree over this body tonight, the year of 2019 will be the year of fulfillment to the faithful. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Don't miss this. Come in. Come in. It will be the year of fulfillment to the faithful, but not without a price. You will face uncertainties. You will face problems. You will face troubles. 
You will come against things you've never been up against before. The enemy will try to turn you and divert you in every way that he can to keep you from being fulfilled this upcoming year. But you, just like Daniel, must be faithful to live true to your convictions. In every area of your life, you will be tested, saith God. You will be tested. You will be tested. 2019 will not be an easy year. But it will be a year of fulfillment to the faithful. Some of you are going to face things you've never faced before this upcoming year. You're going to hear the preacher. I'm speaking now. I'm not speaking on my own. You will face things you've never faced this upcoming year. But God said if you'll remain faithful in the testing, if you'll remain faithful in the trial, if you'll remain faithful in the dark season, if you'll remain faithful in the valley, mine eyes shall be upon you, saith God. And you will weather the storm. You will go through the other side. And if you stay true to me, this year will be the year of fulfillment if you will stay faithful to me. Because a faithful man shall abound with my blessings. That is my word. That is my promise to the faithful. If you want my eyes to be upon you this, this year, you stay faithful to me. You walk with me. You love me with all of your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. Amen. You serve me and walk with me. Don't waver to the right. Don't waver to the left. Don't become lazy and laxity in your walk with me. Yeah. Stay alert. Be sober. Be vigilant. I have what you need. I'll give you treasures in the dark seasons of your life, saith God. I have secret places. Secret places not hid from you, but hid for you. Wow. Wow. Come from, right? Wow. <sighs> you know, son, I love these old dead, wasted, not perfect, not. I love these old dead servers over there, but don't you know me that dead? Ain't that love your old dead servers? Wow. Mm. Wow. Mm. Well, children, that's all I have. I hope you did. If you got anything, I hope you got that last part because that wasn't from me. Amen. That was from your God to you if you heard what you think he said. Amen. Don't ask me what it was because I can't remember the hardly either. You better hear the preacher. You better hear me. This could be your year. Amen. But the key, the key is faithfulness. Okay. Faithfulness is a fruit. Fruit has to be developed. It has to be cultivated. Take advantage of every opportunity that you have that tries to take you out of faithfulness to be faithful. I'm going to touch on some things that some, of, some people are not going to enjoy. They're not going to enjoy it. Ma'am, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'll feed you the whole gospel. I ain't going to feed you half of it. I'm going to tell you the good part, and I'll tell you the bad part. I'm going to tell you the blessing, I'm going to tell you the curse. 
The curse will come out being unfaithful. And as we go, you'll see. You can make up your mind whether you want to live in the blessing or the curse. Buddy, I believe I've killed my people. I thought I'd do pretty good. I thought I'd do pretty good. <laughs> Emma, you ain't seeing what I'm seeing back here. <laughs> you need to turn around and look at these places while I'm doing. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm done, by the way. Oh, gosh, it's time. Let's go get up. Come on, let's go get up. Come on, we're going to go. I'm going to get you out here. I'm supposed to get you out here at 8.30. My wife said it'd be done by 8.30. Her show comes on at 9. <laughs> she's, she's, she's laying there. She's laying there watching her show. I'm looking for the bed at 8 o'clock. Thank you, Lord. My God, Lord. She goes, I go, I'll fall asleep for you if you started. I get her one, I text her back. I said, I never did hear you leave last night. What time did you leave? <laughs>